welcome to your brand expert tips. So today I'm in the car, I'm driving to interview Rafael Dos Santos for our monthly Brand Brain magazine. So you'll have to forgive me, I am driving, although you are sat in a phone cradle. So I'm not holding the phone, I'm still holding the steering wheel. Uh, just imagine that we're on Top Gear or something really interesting. So I'm talking to the camera. So today I want to talk about celebrity branding. Now because I'm going down to interview Raphael who's very much making a name for himself in his industry and becoming known as a celebrity in his own right. Now Raphael is one of the most action-taking customers I've ever worked with. He's absolutely fantastic and you know he's the kind of guy that when you say this brand new thing has just come out and you need to try it or this is really working in branding and building your brand right now, go and do this. He just goes and does it, it's absolutely fantastic. So I can't wait to interview him today and I can't wait to bring you the interview in our monthly Brand Brain Easy. I'll put a little link to it, uh, to the, the page on our website so you can go and have a look. Anyway, talking about celebrity branding. So what's really good about using celebrity status in your branding is that people position you as somebody that they really, really want to do business with and they really want to work with and spend time with. And it's really funny. I don't know if you've ever been in a room with a, a friend maybe or someone you know and a celebrity has walked into the room. Maybe you've been in a concert or you've been somewhere where there's a celebrity there and you've noticed that that person sees a celebrity come in and they just go really weird. By weird I mean they, they sometimes they go quiet and it's like they're in awe of this person or sometimes they can go really over the top and try and get the attention of that person and become quite annoying. I know a few people like this and I don't know I've just noticed that they go really weird. I think it's because that to a certain extent they are in awe of that person but they're also excited and nervous and all these other feelings and emotions that come up when this celebrity is in front of them, which is really interesting because as a nation and as, a, you know, as people growing up around kind of what we consider to be normal people, the minute that a celebrity or the boss walks in the room, that's it, they're positioned as a certain status. Well, that's exactly the same as your brand when you position it with a, as a celebrity. You position it with celebrity status. Now, a great way of leveraging your uh, your brand is to use somebody else's brand, like a celebrity, who has built a very, very good personal brand. So, when you take Richard Branson, for example, he's built an incredible brand that's very people based, very customer focused, very customer service driven. He's all about fun and adventure and he doesn't take himself seriously, although he's very, very serious about his brand. And as a positioning tool using Richard Branson, if that's the kind of brand association you want people to have with your brand, by using a name like Richard Branson and working with him or have him endorse your product or service, you are automatically um, borrowing some of that credibility that he has spent years building. If you take, for example, Mylene Class, you know, she's, uh, and Danny Minogue as well, Twiggy, you take all of these uh, leading role models who Marks and Spencers have paid to help leverage their brand. Now these are people who have built really good relationships and, and personal brands with the public so they're loved by the nation. So if you want other people to love your brand, you want the nation to love your brand, then you want to use celebrities who have built that kind of culture, those values. So do think about using celebrities because just as we are in awe of celebrities when we see them and they walk into the room, that's how you want your potential customers to feel about your brand, isn't it? 
I know that I would want to have people think, you know, I really want to work with this person. What is it going to take to work with them rather than you have to try and fight for the business and get people's attention all the time? You see, the more you position yourself around these kind of people, the more your prospects and your clients are going to value you and appreciate you as somebody who is on the way up, somebody who is already hanging around with a circle of influence that they themselves want to be a part of and be a part of that environment. So doing this with your brand will help you. I mean, it could double, triple, quadruple, or even more your business sales just by aligning yourself with somebody of that kind of status. So ask yourself what kind of brand you want to be and, and if you were to position yourself with a celebrity, what kind of celebrity would you want to represent your business? Obviously, you don't want somebody who's in the paper for doing naughty things regularly or that does have any kind of stigma attached to them in that way because again you know whatever brand you associate yourself with you're going to end up borrowing or inheriting some of that culture whether you like it or not so do try and pick somebody who could represent your brand in a way that you want it to be represented don't just pick any celebrity just because you can it's not worth it it's really not worth aligning your, your brand to somebody who is known for failing or letting people down or peeing people off. Just don't do that. I found that by going to events where you know that celebrities are gonna be there, it's not that difficult or challenging to get in front of them. Especially if you've paid for an advanced ticket, like a platinum ticket, for example, some um, conferences and trade shows that you go to, you can actually upgrade your ticket so you get a chance to have a photo with the celebrity or you might get a chance to spend some time with that celebrity because you've paid to upgrade that ticket. That is absolutely worth doing. Um, last year at the National Achievers Congress, Miles and I paid 1,200 pound a ticket to be in the Platinum Lounge. But I tell you what, when you're hanging around with these celebrities and people who are on stage like Sebastian Coe, Donald Trump, Richard Branson, Alan Sugar, oh gosh, who else did we meet? Anthony Robbins, you know? When you're hanging around with those kind of people in the back room, there's something special about that. And by getting your photo taken with them and by asking them questions, and I mean, not pitching your business at them, ask them questions about, how they overcame something in their business, a challenge that you're going through right now. Because these people have been through it, and nine times out of 10, they've probably been through it in a much more public way and a much more expensive way than you've had to go through it. So use it as an opportunity to ask them questions. The year before last, Tony Robbins was out the back again, the same event, National Achievers Congress, which I love going to, it's in London every year. And I asked Tony Robbins a question about branding and, and what he thinks about building a brand, what's been the most important thing in his brand journey. And I had my iPhone right next to me, so as he was answering me, I recorded the whole thing. Well, I was able to then put that out to my entire network. That positions me as somebody who is hanging around with that level of authority and that kind of person. And I'm not lying because I am. I might be paying to be out the back there, but th that is building my circle of influence. There were people on the stage that day, like Andy Harrington and Simon Colson, sharing the stage with Tony Robbins, who I didn't even know before. And I was looking at them on stage thinking, oh my God, wow, this is amazing. You know, these guys are incredible. They're speaking to, like there's 8,000 people sat behind me. Now these people are some of my closest friends. And it's because I put myself in that environment of being around them. So don't be afraid to ask because if you don't ask, you don't get. A great example of that is my other half, Steve, who he has so much more confidence than me. And sometimes I look at him and think, oh my God, I wish I could be like that. But 
I don't have as much confidence as him. He's he's really ballsy, and it just goes to show that actually, um, you know, when I've mimicked some of the things that he's done, when I thought, hang on a minute, you know, if he can do it, I can do it. When I've gone and done it, it's not been that difficult. So it just goes to prove you don't need to be a ballsy, confident person to get in front of these celebrities. When we were at the um, Unleash the Power Within, Tony Robbins UPW event about five weeks ago in London, one of Steve's friends has a little girl who um, she'd said to one of Tony's uh, bodyguards that she would really love for Tony to carry her little girl across the fire. And Tony apparently had agreed to this. Well, when... Um, when this friend of Steve's was telling him about this, Steve in his head's going, I want that for Lily, his little girl who's four years old, my stepdaughter. So we were, um, we're, we're round the back of where everybody was hanging out. And Steve says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Tony to carry Lily across the fire. And, uh, and I just knew that he was gonna do it because Steve is the sort of person, when he sets his mind to something, that's it. I've learned a lot from him and it's something that you can learn as well you know I, I just I thought right he's gonna do it so off he went and that night it was about oh gosh it was about midnight one o'clock in the morning by the time we were actually walking across the fire it was really really late and trying to get 5,000 people across the fire was a bit crazy but Steve had it in his mind that he was gonna to get Tony Robbins to carry Lily across the fire and he actually went through, I, I believe it was 19 people, it was either 18 or 19 different people, he went through saying, I wanna to get Tony Robbins to walk my daughter across the fire, who do I need to speak to? They'd pass him to the next person, who do I need to speak to to get Tony Robbins to carry Lily across the fire? And in the end, he got in front of Tony Robbins' best friend and wife, Sage, who both said, yep, no problem, get into that lane over there, that's where Tony's going to be walking. Make sure you're there because he'll come across and he will walk Lily across the fire. Sure enough, Tony came along. Him and Steve had a really great chat. Steve got to know Sage a lot better and Gary King, one of Tony's really good friends, who's an incredible speaker that I saw speak at the Yes Group last week. And sure enough, Tony Robbins carried Lily across the fire. Now at four years old, Lily won't even probably remember and she won't know until she's older what a big thing that actually was. But to people who follow Tony Robbins and he has got millions and millions of followers all over the world, Steve using that footage will help him to position himself as somebody who hangs around with Tony Robbins who is a family guy and you know and that's who Steve is Steve's all about community and family so it's a great brand for him to position himself with so think about who you could position yourself with sometimes you might need to pay to get in front of these celebrities other times you don't you know there are b-list celebrities who are out of work you might not want to align your brand to somebody out of Big Brother but then there might be somebody who has been on TV in Coronation Street or Emmerdale, something like that, who, you know, they made a good amount of money while they were working, but now they're out of work because the season is over, the project is over, and they've got no money coming in. Well, people still remember them as the celebrity they were when they were on telly, so it is worth asking them to help you endorse your product or service. It might even be that you can help them with something that you already deliver. So for example, not long ago, I helped a musician with the album cover and the branding and everything for their music. And in return, they gave me incredible endorsements because I was really helpful and I helped them to position themselves as a market leader in the music industry, which is incredibly tough. And in fact, within 24 hours of the launch of their first single, we had 13,000 hits to their YouTube channel and helped to continue that. Within a week, they had over 50,000 hits to their YouTube channel. So in return for the endorsements that that person gave me, I gave them the credibility, the visibility and everything they needed to start building their brand as a musician who previously was pretty much unknown. So what can you offer a celebrity? There might be something that you can do in return for that endorsement. If it comes to you paying for it, 
it's not actually that difficult to get in front of a celebrity when you use Google, for example, you can get in touch with their manager or their, um, their agent. Yesterday, I was looking to get in touch with Ruby Wax. I Googled Ruby Wax, her business came up online. There were different things about her being a speaker. Um, there were different websites that she's put herself on because she's wanting business. She's wanting to attract work. It wasn't that difficult for me to get through to her and send her an email. Twitter is a brilliant way of you getting in front of these celebrities. So, you know, don't be afraid to use the channels that are there that are open to you. If you're on Twitter and you um, you find out their Twitter address, just start tagging them in things. Start promoting them. Start helping them to promote them. Do really good things. Get in front of them. Be nice. Start conversations with them. Have a chat. These people are not supernatural. They're, they are human beings. And, and you know, like Jada, um, what's her name? Uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, Will Smith's wife. She was on Facebook last night and I, I sent a message to her. Haven't responded to me yet. That doesn't mean she won't, you know. It's get in front of them. The more you start getting in front of them, the better. I'll leave you with a little story about a, a friend of mine who is in a circle that I am part of. And this, this goes back a number of years. But it always stuck in my mind as, okay, well, if she can do it, I can do it. Now, this lady, she is a, a dog trainer and a, a very, very good dog trainer. And you might know who I'm talking about if you're in the same kind of circle as me. Anyway, she decided that she really wanted to build her brand as a celebrity brand. She wanted to become the celebrity dog trainer. Now, to become a celebrity dog trainer, she put together a, a proposition, how she was gonna brand herself. And the unique selling point that she had was that she trains the owner, not the pet. So what she did was she phoned up every radio station in her local area and all of the national radio stations. She pushed herself at, forward as the celebrity dog trainer. She came up with a great little story and within a few days, she got the opportunity to go on one of the major radio stations and do an interview on, um, on dog training and what she does. Anyway, she positioned herself as a celebrity dog trainer. They did this whole interview with her and Jerry Halliwell happened to be listening to that radio interview and got in touch with my friend. And it didn't take long before she'd built that celebrity status because the minute she got one celebrity on board, who do celebrities hang out with? Other celebrities. So it really didn't take very long for her to actually become the celebrity dog trainer. So that should teach you something about making a decision about who you are and then branding yourself as that person. Because it, she, all she had to do was decide that she was a celebrity dog trainer. And she made that happen, she manifested it. Because the more you talk about being a celebrity dog trainer, the more it's likely that you are gonna start bumping into celebrities who want you to train their dogs. So she did really, really well out of that and has built a fantastic brand now. These are just some of the tips that I can give you around building your, your brand as a celebrity. And I'm sorry that this video has been a bit jumpy, but hopefully the content has been really good for you. If you want to get in contact with a celebrity to help you position your brand, they are the biggest tips I can give you. Either hang out where they're hanging out, go to trade shows and events where they're going to be, and upgrade yourself to a ticket which enables you to get out the back with them or get a photo with them. Get online, find out who they are on Twitter, find out their Twitter names, um, find out who their agents and their managers are. Find out how much it would cost for them to endorse your brand. Sorry, I'm going through a tunnel. <laughs> find out how much it would cost you to do that. Um, you know, because it might not cost you that much. And if you have to pay 1,000 or 2,000 pounds to a celebrity to endorse your brand, well, if that's gonna quadruple your sales or increase your sales by 50 times, then that's gotta be worth spending 2,000. In fact, you're not spending, you're investing it. So it's worth doing that. 
And you know, it, another way of doing it is if you're writing a book, include them in the book that you're writing. You know, mention them in it. Let them know you're going to mention them in it. If you want them to endorse the book, then ask them for it. It's it's really it, it it's really as simple. Once you've made up your mind on which celebrity it is you want to help you with your brand, you can get yourself in front of them quite easily. And I could go on all day about stories I know about people that have got in front of celebrities really easily. But I want you to find this out for yourself. Do let me know how you get on. I can't wait to find out. And uh, if you've got any questions at all about positioning your brand or leveraging your brand, using celebrities to do it, please do put them in the comments box below. And if you've liked what I've said in this video, please like it and share it with other people you know who might want to position their brand with celebrities or position their brand as the celebrity in their industry. Because we really, really want to help more people just like you. So. I'm coming up to my turning now to go and interview Raphael. Do pick up your issue of Brand Brain Magazine. I'll put a link to it under this video. And I shall very much look forward to seeing you in another branding tip. Take care, bye-bye.